Hi. You've all heard about bots generating language and that computers maybe will write poetry in the future. In this video, we're going to take our very first look at natural language generation. And we're going to use engrams to generate language, to generate new sentences no one has ever uttered before. So Botnik Studios is one of my favorites. They take natural language input and then teach the computer to generate new outputs. For example, Super Bowl facts. The modern Super Bowl Sunday is the exact size of a bus. The game is strictly platonic. Natural language generation is two things. It's the transformation of structured computer data into language for example, to report results from a device or from a database. This is your, you know, your sci-fi ship that then with a voice with a voice tells you the status of the ship is this and this. Or this is your robot that um, transforms the it's the database of knowledge into an explanation. Or in a more down-to-earth application, maybe you collected information from a big data application and you want the computer to present it in English in 30 seconds. This is one thing that is natural language generation. A second thing is generating new text that is creative. For example, writing poems or writing a novel. Maybe it looks at a picture and from there it writes a poem. Or maybe it reads all of Shakespeare and then it tries to write a new Shakespeare play. This is also a type of natural language generation. In this class, we're going to look at three ways in which we can generate natural language. This video is going to talk about engrams, so chains of words chained by their probabilities. On week six, we're going to talk about neural language generation, which uses deep learning neural networks like um, RNNs and LSTMs to generate new text. and uh, on week seven, we're going to be talking about parsing rules to aid in natural language generation. For example, if we have a very uh, specific structure that we want to generate, like a poem. Here, we're going to talk about the most basic form of natural language generation through engrams. So this is automatic Shakespeare. For example, if we generated, generated it out of a unigram, it would sound like this. To him swallowed, confess you both. Which? Of save on trail for RA device and wrote life half. Hill he laid speaks, or a more to leg less first you enter. Not great. Uh, let's see how we would do with chains, chains of bigrams. Why dost stand forth like canopy forsooth? He is this palpable hit to King Henry. Live king, follow. What means, sir? I confess she. Then all sorts he is trim, Captain. Still not great. Let's see uh, what we can do with chains of trigrams. Fly and will rid me of these news of price. Therefore the sadness of parting, as they say, tis done. This shall forbid it should be branded, if renown made it empty. A little bit more readable. How about four grams? Chains of four grams. King Henry, what? I'll go seek the traitor Gluster. Ex soon some of the watch. A great banquet served in. It cannot be but so. So how did the computer make these? Let's go back to our n-gram table, our bigram table from the example uh, restaurant example. We had 9,000 sentences asking questions about restaurants. And from there, we calculated how many times we have the combination I want 828 times, I eat 10 times, and I food, which is just that one time that we inserted with smoothing. So let's choose a random starting point. How about I want? We have the bigram I want, which has two elements, I want. Let's take the second element and make it the first element of a new bigram. Where can we go? We have want as our first element, and then what are the possible second elements of that bigram? It could be want to, which happens 609 times. 
It could be want food, which happens seven times, same as want Chinese. It could be want lunch, which happens six times. So let's go with the one with the highest count, want to. So we have I want, and let's add want to. Oop. We have the biogram want to. So let's take the second element, two, and make it the first element of the new biogram. We're standing on two, and then where do we go? Maybe we can go to to eat, which occurs 687 times. We can go to spend, which occurs 212 times. We could go to lunch, which occurs seven times. Since we're using the one with the highest count, let's, ha let's have to eat. So I want, want to, to eat. So we have the biogram to, to eat. Let's take the second element, eat, and make it the first one of the new biogram. So we are chaining biograms together. If we are standing on eat, where could we go? We could go to eat lunch, which occurs 43 times, eat Chinese 17 times, eat two, which occurs three times. Let's choose the one with the highest count, eat lunch. I want, want to, to eat, eat lunch. A chain of biograms that was the most likely chain for us to follow. I want 828 times, want to 609 times, to eat 687, eat lunch 7. Oh, I'm sorry, 43. Um, the model just generated a sentence. From these humble starts, which are just counts of how many biograms you have, this language model could generate a valid, grammatical, and perfectly good sentence of English. I want to eat lunch. So it knows a little bit of English. Why don't you give it a try? I chose the, the path with the likeliest, uh, I'm sorry, with the highest count for each of the chains. Why don't you give it a try? Let's start with the word I. And if you're at I, you can go to I want, I eat, I spend. Try to take the, um, the two most likely paths, so the two paths with the highest count, and then you choose at random, and then go to one or the other. And keep going until you have five words. And let's see what kind of sentence can you generate. Then give it another try and see if you land at some other sentence. This way, you will be able to generate quite a few sentences of English. So follow these instructions, give it a try, and I'm going to count to five for you to pause the video now. I'll give you some of my solutions when I count to five. Two, three, four, five. Welcome back. These are some of the ones I made. So I want to eat Chinese lunch. I want to spend two. I want food to eat. I want food to spend. Uh, uh, I eat Chinese food too. So all of these are English sentences. This humble engram model knows quite a bit of English because it knows how to put English sentences together. Again, try to see this against the back backdrop of you learning a foreign language. Try to think of how long it takes you to be able to do this in a foreign language. And the computer can replicate that ability just by having the input and then counting the number of bigrams it has. So this is a way that the computer can use n-grams to generate new, uh, sentences of a language. This is how Shakespeare got generated here. If it's a unigram, then it's just choosing random unigrams from a big bag. So the most likely word gets chosen the most often, and so forth. To him, swallowed, confess, you're both. This makes absolutely no sense. Biograms would be exactly what we did. Chains of two words. Why does stand for thy canopy, forsooth? This is still not very good. It's mostly gibberish. Trigrams would be chains where you have one, two, three elements, and then the last two elements 
become the first two elements of the following trigram. And once you've changed that one, the last two elements of that trigram become the next two elements of the following trigram. Using this kind of chaining, the trigram says, fly and will rid me these news of price. Therefore, the sadness of parting, as they say, does done. That sounds a little bit more like English. It's starting to sound like it. A four gram is pushing it because this would be one, two, three words. And then you choose the last three words as the, as the first three words of the next four gram. And then you take the last three words of that four gram as the first three words of the next four gram. And that's how you do the chaining. King Henry, what? I will go seek the traitor Glasta. Exit some of the watch. This sounds very much like English. We'll come back to the foreground in a second. Again, the input determines the output. We would get very different sentences if we trained this on the Wall Street Journal, for example. If it's just a unigram, it would... Um, oh, by the way, it's 40 million words from the Wall Street Journal. If it's just unigrams, we get... Months to my end, issue of year four in new exchanges, September, where recession exchange, new endorser acquired to six executives. That doesn't sound like English at all. The pie grab says, last December through the way to preserve the Hudson Corporation. Eh, not great. Uh, the trigram starts to sound a little bit more like it. They also point to $99.6 billion from 204. Uh, rates of interest stores as Mexico and Brazil and market conditions. That sounds a little bit more like it. There's a danger in going to, uh, to have more and more engrams. Let's take Shakespeare. Shakespeare has about 884,000 tokens in total. So uh, words in all of the Shakespeare's work. It has about 29,000 unique tokens. Those could be our unigrams, 29,000. If you have 29,000 unigrams, you could have 844 million possible bigrams. You could have 24.5 trillion trigrams, and you would have 713 quadrillion foregrams. <laughs> that, that, that is a monstrous amount. However, most of them are uh, zero. 99.96% of the bigrams are zero because there's many words that are never that never appear next to one another. Because of this, the, the more it grows, the, more, the larger percentage of it is going to be just zeros. And as you get more and more zeros, the possible paths that you can take become fewer and fewer. So by the time you get to four grams, there's so few paths that essentially you are just reciting the path you followed when you were generating the four gram. You are producing Shakespeare because it is Shakespeare. It is exactly what the program read and it's just spitting it out. This is a form of overfitting where the model only really learns what the data that has been shown to it as the input. Trigrams are a happy medium for this. They're, they don't produce amazing text, but they, are, they actually produce new structures that you could not find in the original text. One important thing is that n-grams also have the same problems we've been seeing so far with finite state machines, for example. When you're trying to model language, you have to model phenomena like long distance dependencies. Something like this sentence. The fact that he's the one who didn't read the recipe and tried to bake the thing all by himself. These two words depend on one another. If you changed she, as the first word, then you also need to change himself to herself. So in order for you to capture this dependency, you'd need something like an 18 gram to have these two words within the same probability. And that at that, that point, you'd be ridiculously overfitting. That n-gram is really no good for uh, generating new structures or really for predicting anything other than the data it just saw. So n-grams do have limitations in how much they can generate data and in how much they can model data, but they are very useful for modeling short distance dependencies. And we're going to be using these a lot. For example, when you are typing on your phone to predict the word you're typing right now or the next word. We're also going to be using them in spell checking to try to see 
if uh, the word you're typing right now uh, could correspond to some other word. We're going to use it in predicting uh, emails, for example, email, email autocompletion. In summary, natural language generation is a process that uses an existing language model, like an engram, to create new sentences that have never been uttered. We can use engrams to generate new sentences by jumping from one bigram to the other, from one trigram to the other. This is very good uh, for modeling in immediate short distance dependencies, but it's not going to be good at remembering long distance dependencies because the, the larger our engrams are, the more we are overfitting the data. The more is just the one path we saw when we were taking the data in. But this doesn't mean that engrams are not useful. They're very useful. Um, in uh, the next videos of the week, we're going to look at some of their applications. For example, uh, prediction of texts, uh, prediction of words in texting, and spell checking.